My problem is that I'm somewhere between a pessimist and a realist. My name is Phil Ayers, and I'm 26 years old. I love women and have been dating since high school and college. I have had sex with many women. My problem is that I can't bring myself to trust them. I would like to find that special woman to love, grow with, and have a family with. Since I started dating, I have liked most of the women I have been with. But I'm afraid of falling in love. I don't want to put my heart out there and have it break. I'm terrible at explaining myself. Perhaps I should start from the beginning. I come from a family of two brothers and one sister. They are all older than me. We were 15, 13, 10 years old, and then I was 5 years old at the time. It all started when my mom went with her friends to a bachelorette party. I don't remember much, but a lot of it was passed on to me as I got older. Dad didn't trust mom. I heard it was because he cheated on her with several girls at a bar. I think that since he cheated, he thought my mother probably would too. He asked my brother to look after us for a couple of hours and ordered us pizza for dinner. He waited two hours before following his mother. He heard her say where they were going. Rumor has it that he followed his mom and her friends to the motel. When he arrived, the women were sitting with a group of men. Mom and another man took the elevator. Dad followed him and waited 15 minutes and then knocked on the door and said, Room service, extra towels. The man opened the door and my father saw my mother naked on the bed. He hit the man with a right cross to the head. Mom screamed, security came, and arrested my father. My mother came home by taxi and my father went to the police station, where he was kept all night. The man did not press charges because he was also married and simply told his wife that he had gotten into a fight. The next day, Mom and Dad had a big fight and Dad went to a lawyer and filed for divorce. They both stayed in the house, but Dad lived in the basement. Our home was very unhappy, but we all survived. After the divorce, Dad moved to a two-room apartment. It was only a block away, so us kids could visit him anytime. The funny thing is that my parents still loved each other. Mom and Dad both attended our family functions and treated each other with respect. They also attended most of our school events. Neither of them ever remarried, but I heard that they dated other people. My older brother Alan was 22 years old when he met a girl named Beth. They talked about how much they loved each other, and Alan asked her hand in marriage. They seemed like the perfect couple, always hugging and kissing. They had a daughter, the sweetest little thing. She was my niece. Beth wanted to go to her fifth year reunion. Alan had to work that day, so Beth went alone. She was angry at Alan for not taking the day off. Alan felt bad that she wasn't there and asked to leave work after half a day. He was on the day shift. Mom was babysitting at her house, so Alan went home, cleaned up, and went to surprise Beth at the meeting. He found Beth hugging and kissing her old high school boyfriend. No one there really knew Alan, so he didn't have to hide. He watched as her old boyfriend fondled her and put his hands under her dress. He watched him remove her panties and she smiled. This is the first time she saw him and shouted, Alan, what are you doing here? The real question is why is he holding your panties? Don't come home today. Mom has a child. As for you, buddy, if I see you again, we'll be going around in circles. Everyone around the hall heard everything. Beth screamed at Alan to wait, but it was too late. Beth and her friend were talking about a reunion. Alan consulted a lawyer, and they divorced three months later. They hadn't been married a year, so they didn't have much to share. They rented an apartment, and Alan allowed her to stay there. He just had to pay child support. He could see his child as often as he wanted. Beth wanted him back, but to this day it hasn't happened. Charlie, my second brother, was a quiet guy. He went to college and dated some. As a result, he got a pretty woman. He worked in a lumber yard, and she was a secretary. They moved in together, and their life seemed happy. They seemed like the perfect couple. They dated for two years before he asked her to marry him. After their second child was born, his wife stopped working and became a housewife. When both children went to school, Dana decided to return to work. After six months, Dana seemed to have changed. She dressed sexier for work 
and had to work late more often. Charlie felt that there was a problem because their sex life had deteriorated a little. Of course, he thought it had a lot to do with taking care of the children. Dana mentioned that she had a sleepover on Friday. She and another secretary had to go to a business meeting, and it was too late to go home. She will be home on Saturday. She and Dolores, the other secretary, would share a room, and the two bosses, Art and Bob, would have another. He told her he didn't like the idea but wouldn't stop her. She told him that he didn't trust her even though she had never done anything wrong. She drove straight from work to Dayton. Dana's mother looked after the children, so when Charlie finished work, he decided to go to Dayton. This might make Dana angry, but he couldn't sit at home and wonder what was going on. He hoped he was wrong. He reached the hotel at about 8 o'clock. He then checked the front desk to see which rooms the men were in. Since he told them the names of the men, the girl working there told him the room numbers. Charlie decided to go to the living room and order a drink before doing anything else. He saw Dana with two men and another woman in a booth in the back. He drank and walked over to a small table where he could not be seen. Around nine o'clock, everyone got up and went to the elevators. Charlie followed him twenty minutes later and entered one of the two rooms. He knocked and hoped for the best. Dolores opened the door. He only knew her by name, but she was with Dana. Behind her, one of the two men stood taking off his shirt. I'm really sorry. I must be in the wrong room. Charlie feared that his suspicions were justified. He knocked lightly on the other door, and the man opened it slightly. Can I help you? Yes, I would like to talk to my wife. Charlie pushed the door open and saw Dana grab a blanket to cover herself. Charlie, what are you doing here? Are you hiding your naked body? asked Charlie. I'm checking on my cheating wife, your mother's children. I suggest you don't come home for a couple of days. I won't be home by Monday. This is all yours, Bob or Art. Whoever you are, I will contact your employer. Have a good evening. The man stepped back towards the door, raised his hand, and clenched his fist. Don't be stupid, asshole. I'll send you on the second Tuesday of next week. If I ever see you again, I'll probably still do it. You're not worth going to jail right now. Seething with anger, Charlie drove home. The adrenaline was more than enough to keep him awake. Dana called his cell phone half a dozen times, leaving messages. He didn't read any of them. It was early morning when Charlie returned home. He rested for a couple of hours and then started packing all his things. When he finished, he left her a note in which he said that he was not interested in her excuses and was contacting a lawyer. Six months later, they divorced. My sister Sue has been married twice already. At 21, she married a real estate agent. He was quite a slick talker and probably talked her out of her pants. Anyway, she got pregnant and Roger said he would marry her. He told my father that he loved her. They seemed happy, but three years later she became pregnant with her second child. While pregnant, she walked into his office and found him having sex with his assistant. During the divorce, Roger said that he believed Sue was cheating on him too. The baby was born the following month and Roger asked for a DNA test for both children. They returned and his first child, a girl, was born. The second child, a boy, was not his. This meant that he only had to pay child support for one child. Sue said she had sex with an old boyfriend she had before she met Roger. She said she still loved him and called him to tell him about the baby. He was happy about it and said that he had always loved Sue. They ended up getting married shortly after her divorce from Roger was final. This brings me back to why I'm afraid to get married. It's like my family put a curse on them. It seemed that all their marriages would last a lifetime. Of course, I didn't believe in curses, but for a marriage to last long, you need something special. I have been working as an insurance agent for five years. I own an agency, which was unusual for a guy my age. I have four agents working for me. I also have a secretary, but I have never dated any woman in my office. I had an old friend, Mary, the girl next door. She literally lived next to my family. I think she was my closest friend. She was a year younger than me and was a tomboy. As a child, I was always a weakling. I almost never played sports. 
I played the piano and later learned to play the guitar. Children in elementary school pushed me around, and Mary began to fight with me. In middle school, I asked my dad if I could go to the gym. I started taking bodybuilding classes and did them for the next seven years. I didn't want bulging muscles, but six-pack abs. In high school, Mary and I didn't spend much time together. She played all women's sports. We remained friends, but we were no longer so close. I still considered her a friend and tried to create most of her games. She played softball, basketball, volleyball, and participated in track and field. I must say that she was very popular. I started dating in my senior year. I asked Mary if she wanted to go to prom. She told me she was going with John Manning. He asked her three weeks ago. John was named prom king, but Mary was a junior, so she couldn't be queen. I asked Lisa, who was a computer geek like me, and she agreed to come with me. Her mom and my mom were friends. We had a good time and I treated her with respect. I didn't have sex with anyone until I was in college. I took over the management of the business and only had to work for two years. I wanted to go to college to get away from my family. I loved them all, but I needed to be alone. I made it home for Mary's graduation. What a party! It seemed like almost everyone from her class was present at the event. I was lucky if I talked to her for ten minutes. I heard that she was prom queen her senior year. This didn't surprise me. She was going to apply for an athletic scholarship. I don't even know what sport it was for. I met a lot of girls in college and had sex with a lot of them. I started to come out of my shell and became somewhat popular. The girls seemed to like that I was a little shy and played the piano. At various parties I was asked to play. Some girls told me that they are looking for the right man. Something told me that a marriage with either of them would not last. I stopped looking for that special woman. I figured if it was meant to be, it would just happen. I have talked to many women about their wants and needs. Some seemed sincere, but I think most were just telling me what they thought I wanted to hear. I had been out of college for several years, I was in the office, and the secretary called me and said that a client wanted to see me. I asked her if any other agents were available, but the client asked me specifically. I told her to send it. I stood up to greet the customer and was shocked to see Mary. I must admit I was shocked. Mary, so glad to see you. I haven't seen you since prom. What can I do for you? Well, Phil, I graduated from college and now work as a teacher in the local school system. I bought a car and thought about you when it came to insurance. My stomach was churning and for some reason I was nervous. No problem, we can take care of it. I asked her to sit down and filled out the form taking her information. She looked even more beautiful than I remembered. After finishing my business, I asked her if she had time to have lunch and talk about old times. She smiled and said that she would go to school on Monday, but didn't know if she should. She was dating someone. Mary, it's just lunch with an old friend. It's just that I haven't seen you for so long. Okay, but I'll go by myself and meet you there. It's so nice to see you again. We decided to meet at a restaurant near the office. After we parked the cars, I opened her door. She smiled as she walked out and we went inside. We sat in a booth near the back wall. We both ordered coffee and she asked me to talk first. Well, Mary, you were always my buddy and friend while we were growing up. After we went to middle school and then high school, you played all kinds of sports. I was so proud of you. I attended almost all your games. I never knew you went to them. I thought I saw you a couple of times, but I wasn't sure. Why didn't you come down and talk to me? You were out of my league. You belonged to the elite part of the school. I didn't mean to embarrass you. At that time, I was more of the geek team. I think I can tell you now that I had a crush on you all through high school. I can't believe you didn't come and talk to me. You have always been my friend. I asked you to prom but you already had a date. I saw you there. You looked so beautiful. My first date was with Lisa Allen and I had a good time. I remember kissing her when I took her home. I was thinking about you when I kissed her. The next week I heard that she was dating an athlete and he was bragging about having sex with her and I felt a little stupid. 
Next year I went to your graduation. I heard you were prom queen. This didn't surprise me. I remember how you kissed me lightly when I said goodbye. I will never forget this. It's your turn to tell me something. You seem to know everything I did in high school. I want you to know that I thought about you and everything we did together as children. Between studying, training and games, I didn't have much free time. You know, you think I was popular, but I tried to treat everyone the same. I didn't date often because my parents were quite strict. I attended state college for four years on a volleyball scholarship. I wasn't a big party girl, but I visited some of them. Not every girl goes to college to party. I went for the education and had to maintain my grades for a scholarship, which I received and taught for two years at Dover. There was a vacancy in my hometown, so I applied and got the position, found out you had an insurance agency, and came to you. Mary, the big question is who are you seeing and how serious is it? Phil, I'm sorry, I kind of lied to you. I was afraid that if I told you the truth, you wouldn't want to go to lunch with me. I don't actually have a boyfriend. I have a son who is two years old. After graduating from college, I went to a big celebration. My so-called girlfriend slipped a substance into my drink and then drugged me. She had tears in her eyes. After that party, I never saw him again. I contacted him a couple of months later and told him I was pregnant. He said he didn't want anything to do with the child. He advised me to have an abortion and gave me $900 to get it. Pay for it. He told me that he wasn't the only one who used me when I passed out. I sat down and cried. I would never have an abortion. If you don't want anything to do with me, I'll understand. Does he know that you had a child? I asked. No, he thought I had an abortion. He doesn't even know the child exists. Mary, I'm sorry you went through all this. I would like to be there and protect you. You are still my friend, and I would like to see you more often. What did you name your child? Philip, in honor of an old friend. She smiled. I'm surprised you're not married. Are you a confirmed bachelor? I just haven't found the right woman. Mary, I'm afraid to get married. You were there when my parents, two brothers and my sister got married. They all seemed happy, and then they all got divorced. I don't want this to happen to me. I want to meet that special woman who will love me for who I am and who we can truly trust and start a family together. We had lunch and I asked her if I could see her again. She said she would like that. She moved back in with her parents and her mother took care of Philip while she worked. I asked her if I could come see her on Saturday. She seemed a little nervous and said she already had plans for Saturday but was free the following weekend. I mentioned that I would call her midweek and maybe we could arrange something. She smiled and agreed. I hugged her lightly and we said goodbye. I had her address and phone number on the insurance forms. I sat and remembered all the good times when we were children. I really thought she was already married. I was surprised that she had a child, but I thought she would make a great mother. She didn't mention much about the man who got her pregnant, but I knew I'd never forget the few words she said. I had his name and the dealership he worked at. On Saturday our office was only open for half a day. I decided to drive past Mary's house. She stood on the porch, dressed, and walked down the stairs, holding the man's hand. He was wearing a suit. They were about to get into the car. She looked up and saw me walking past. There was a look of surprise on her face, and I felt like an idiot. I just kept going. Everything you could think of flashed through my head. Was it a relative, a boyfriend, a date? I was sad, but maybe I had a chance with her. I went to see my mother, and she asked me to stay for lunch. I mentioned to her that Mary came over the other day and bought insurance. Mom asked about her, and I told her that she was as beautiful as ever. I mentioned that she has a son, but is not married. I went home, and I had the hardest time sleeping. I saw Mary again. I thought I would have to try to forget about her. On Monday, I went to work and tried my best to stay busy. My receptionist asked me if everything was okay. I told her that I had a little trouble sleeping over the weekend. About five o'clock, she said that Mary Moore would like to see me. I told her to let her in. I stood up and asked her to sit down. We both started talking at the same time, 
so I spoke first again. Mary, I'm sorry I drove past you. I wasn't stalking you. I thought about you and drove past on the way home. I'm really sorry. Phil, I should be the one apologizing. I should have told you that I have a date on Saturday. Jim is the principal of the school where I taught. He asked me out two weeks ago. I know he has a crush on me, but I just like him as a friend. Do you still want to go out on Saturday? Yeah, I was actually thinking we'd go to the baseball game and maybe have dinner, depending on how much we eat during the game. I'd also like to meet little Philip. It seems good to me. What time is the game? I'll be there at noon. The game starts at two. She stood up and I lightly hugged her. She looked at me and kissed me tenderly. See you on Saturday. I've been thinking about her all week. I couldn't get her out of my head. I wondered if I could be just friends with her. Time will show. She was the one person I could never forget, and I never did anything with her except for one kiss at her graduation. I walked in on Saturday, and she was dressed to play. She was wearing a T-shirt and a baseball cap. Her hair was pulled back into a ponytail. She looked like a sexy teenager. She invited me in and introduced me to her parents. They remembered me as the little neighbor boy who always played with Mary. A little boy came in or staggered around. He came up to me and I took him in my arms. Hi, Philip. Nice to meet you. Mary said that he had just begun to speak, so it was not easy to understand him. It looked like he said, Dada, but I wasn't sure. He never had a father, so I still couldn't understand where he got that word from. It sounded good to me, though. She took it and kissed his cheek before handing it to his mother. Then we went to the game. Mary said Philip called her father Dad, and since I was a guy, he called me the same. He didn't know many words. It was fun to be with her. We have a hot dog and a drink. We decided that we would go out to eat later. It was like we were old friends again. I didn't want this to happen, but my feelings for her returned. I held her hand, and she didn't stop me. She simply smiled. I bought Philip a t-shirt and a Nerf ball. Mary said I didn't have to do it, but I told her I wanted to. We headed to a restaurant that I knew had good food. We ordered a mixed drink and dinner. The owner of the restaurant approached me and asked if I could play a couple of numbers for them on the piano. They had a group coming in, but they weren't going to start for an hour or so. After the game ended, the room was quite crowded. I looked at Mary, and she said she would like to hear me play. They replaced our table with a table next to the stage. They brought us drinks, but said they would hold off on dinner until we were ready for it. The manager had the microphone and said they were honored to have Phil Ayers play some songs on the piano for their enjoyment. I asked Mary if she wanted to hear anything special. She said it's okay. I played some of my old favorite games. While I was cooking, I took the microphone and said that my last number was for a very special friend. I look at Mary and play You Don't Know Me by Willie Nelson and Ray Charles. You give me your hand and then you say hi. And I can hardly speak, my heart is beating so fast. And anyone could say, you think you know me well, but you do not know me. I put everything I had into the song. I actually had tears in my eyes while I was playing. Conversations in the restaurant stopped as they listened. I assumed that almost everyone knew the words to the iconic song, because I never knew the art of making love, although my heart ached from loving you. Afraid and shy, I missed my chance. Chance that you could love me too. When I finished, several people stood up and applauded me. I bowed and returned to Mary, who also had tears in her eyes. The manager came up, thanked me and said that dinner would be at the expense of the guests. Mary told me that she liked all the songs, but especially the one that was dedicated. She knew it was for her. We ate dinner and several people came to our table to thank me for playing. I took Mary home and asked if I could see her again. She said, any time, and then kissed me. It was real and passionate. I told her I would call her sometime during the week. She mentioned that she taught seventh graders and practiced volleyball after school. She was an assistant coach. She played games most Tuesdays and Thursdays and practiced the other three days. Most of all, she missed being at home with her son. Her mother loved her grandson and did not mind looking after him. 
Since I was the boss and could manage my own time, I decided to leave the office early on Tuesday and Thursday. I walked past the Moore house and picked up Philip. Since I didn't have a car seat, I borrowed the one Mrs. Cousmore had. After we got him settled, I went to the volleyball game. The first time I did this, Mary was very surprised. She found it difficult to concentrate on the game. After the first time, she got used to it. Philip liked to sit next to me and watch the game. When he was tired, he would climb into my lap and take a nap. I loved the baby almost as much as I loved his mother. I just wasn't sure we'd get married. We actually kissed, but we never did it again. That's why I believed I loved her so much. Just being with her made me happy. After the game, I always took him to his grandmother. One Friday when I arrived at their house, Mary's mother seemed a little nervous. I asked her if there was a problem, and she said the guy who was dating Mary called. He wanted to know if she was still going to go with him to the teacher conference in Columbus on Saturday. I wasn't sure what to say or do. Mary never mentioned the conference to me. We never made any plans for that Saturday. I thought I'd just come in and we'd play by ear. I was getting ready to go home. I really didn't want to see Mary then, but she walked through the door. She kept smiling until she saw the expression on my face. Phil, what's the matter? Is Philip okay? She looked at me and then at her mother. What is it, Mom? Jim called and asked what time you wanted him to pick you up tomorrow to go to the convention. My God, the last time we met, I told him that I wouldn't go with him. He told me he wouldn't give up so easily. I'm not going, Phil. I never told you about this, because I completely forgot about it. You have to believe me. It was more than a month ago when he told me about this conference. Mary went to the phone and called Jim. When he answered, she told him she wasn't going. She then told him to stop calling because she has a boyfriend that she loves. I didn't know what to think or do. Mary called it off right there, in front of her mother and me. Phil, I'm so sorry. Everything was so good between us. I don't know what else to do. I really love you even though we've only been together for a month. I've never felt anything like this. About another person. Please forgive me. I left and went home. I didn't go to visit that weekend. I went on Tuesday to pick up my little friend. He walked right up to me and his grandmother smiled. We went to a volleyball match and when we walked in, Mary had a big smile on her face. After the game she hugged and kissed her son, and then hugged and kissed me. I did the same on Thursday. One thing I forgot to mention. When Philip and I went to the game, women always sat next to us. I didn't know any of them, but they introduced themselves. I think they just like to play with Philip, but Mary told me that they had better not attack me. This made me laugh. I think Mary was like me and a little insecure. On Thursday after the game I took Philip home. I said goodbye and went home before Mary arrived. On Friday I went to work, and when I returned home, Mary stopped at my front door. Mary, what are you doing here? Is Philip okay? He is okay. I stopped at home and talked to my mother. I told her that I would come to you and not return until the morning. She reached into the back seat and pulled out her bag. Phil, I think we both have a problem, and I'm here to help solve it. I'm going to make love to you. I love you, and only you and I are going to prove it. We went inside, and I ordered Chinese takeout. After eating, we drank wine, sat on the sofa, and started hugging. I was past second base when Mary stood up and led me to my bedroom. I undressed her and then took off my clothes. Then we got busy passionate love. I rolled off her to catch my breath. I have never felt such strong feelings for a woman. She turned over on her side and pressed herself against me. I love you, Phil Ayers. We kissed, and after a while I got up to get us something to drink. She got up to go to the bathroom and clean up a bit. We went back to bed and drank a glass of wine while we talked. I told her I loved her, but didn't know what to do. She told me that I should marry her, then she could move in with me and make love all the time. She knew that I was afraid to get married. I was always afraid it wouldn't last. She said she would do whatever I wanted to keep us together. I took our glasses and put them on the table. Then I turned off the lights and we made serious love in the next round. 
we went to bed, and when I woke up in the morning, I pressed myself against her back. We got up, and she went to the shower. I put on a t-shirt and boxers and made us coffee. Mary came out dressed and looked so beautiful. She said she needed to go home and take care of Philip. I told her that I have work today, but I will see her on Sunday. We kissed and I walked her to the car. I remember what she said about getting pregnant. I loved her and Philip. When she talked about our wedding, she made me believe it would work. And most of all, I wanted to be the boy's real father. So I went to the office and found out everything I could about the guy who was the father boy. I went to his dealership in Dover, looked at a few cars and said I'd probably come back. Instead, I followed him as he left. He went to a restaurant nearby and sat in a booth. I stopped at the bar and ordered a draft beer. I then walked over and asked if I could join him, saying I had a few more questions about a couple of his cars. Later, when he went to the toilet, I took a strong sleeping pill and slipped it into his beer. I knew he would be out in half an hour. We talked, and he told me where he went to college and how his dad owned a dealership so he always knew where he was going to work. He said he felt very tired and decided to return to the dealership. He got to his car and fell. I bought a DNA test kit and rubbed it into his mouth. I just let him lie on the seat and went home. On Sunday, I went to visit Mary and Philip. We decided to go to a street fair so he could go on the kids' rides. While Mary went to get ready, I took the DNA test and rubbed it into Philip's mouth. On Monday, I went to the clinic and asked if they could send me two tests. I told them my name and said it was my second child. I thought they thought I was checking to see if I was the father so I didn't have to pay child support. They told me it was not like television and would take a few weeks. I told them everything was fine. As I drove home, I wondered if I was doing the right thing. Will Mary be upset about this? How could I make her see how much I loved them? Over the next few weeks, everything was almost back to normal. Philip and I went to games, even away games. Saturday was our day to do something together. On Sundays, we would go to my mother's or stay at Mary's and have dinner. Three weeks passed and I received a call from the clinic. They said they had my DNA results and I could come and get them. The doctor gave me the results and said that I was the father of the boy. I smiled and thanked him. I couldn't wait to tell Mary. I called her before practice and asked if she would go to City Hall with me. She asked why and I told her it was a surprise. I stopped at her house and asked her to get Philip's birth certificate and take it with her. Phil, what's going on? Is there something wrong? I've never seen you like this. Do you really love me, Mary? You know that I know. What's happening? I want to make Philip my biological son. From now on he will be if you agree. If yes, just follow what I say. Phil, what did you do? Mary exclaimed. Please, Mary, just do what they ask. We walked in, and I told the clerk that I wanted to legally change my son's last name. I said I wasn't there when he was born, so my name wasn't on his birth certificate. I'm back and I want this fixed. I placed his certificate on the counter. The father was not listed on the old birth certificate. Sir, you must provide proof that you are his father. Mary looked confused. I was sure she had questions. I just hoped that after I explained it all, she would see how much I loved her and little Philip. I placed the DNA tests on the counter proving I was his biological father as well as my driver's license. The clerk reviewed the test documents and then filed an application to amend the birth certificate. Mary had to show her driver's license to prove that her mother was on the license. Once all the documents are returned, he will legally become Philip Brian Ayers. I thanked him and took little Philip in my arms. Then we went to the car. Are you going to tell me how you did it? You know that this makes you fully responsible for him. I love you, but I can't believe you did this. I love him and I want him to have a real father. He never needs to know anything else. We sat in the car for a few minutes. Mary looked out the window but said nothing more. My heart was racing as I waited for her to speak. You did this for us? For me? Yes. I would do anything for you, Mary. I was about to say more, but Philip started whining. 
It was late, and I thought he was hungry. I drove across town and stopped at McDonald's. He grinned when he saw where we were. We ordered him a kid's meal, and Mary and I each ordered a hamburger and fries. I sat Philip down in the cushioned chair, and Mary sat next to him. Even though it was crowded and there was a lot of noise, I didn't notice any of it. I only saw Mary. I reached into my pocket and knelt down in front of her. Mary, you know how much I love you. Will you marry me? My God, yes, yes, I will marry you. She smiled and cried at the same time. I put the ring on her finger and kissed her quickly. We ate and watched little Philip make a mess, but he was having fun. I couldn't believe how much I loved this child. When we returned to Mary's house, I saw Mr. Bruce Moore sitting in his chair. Mrs. Seymour came out of the kitchen. She must have noticed us smiling when she asked what was going on. Mary extended her hand and her mother began to cry. They hugged and her father smiled at me. After they calmed down, Mary told her parents about going to the courthouse. She said that I am now Philip's father legally. Mary showed her a copy of the new birth certificate and said that we would soon receive the amended original. They didn't ask how we did it, and I didn't provide any information. Mrs. Moore asked when we would get married, and I told her that it was entirely up to Mary. I just told them that I prefer sooner rather than later. We decided that Thanksgiving was only six weeks away and Mary would be done with volleyball, so we decided that we would get married the previous weekend. I was still nervous as hell about the wedding, but I truly loved Mary and little Philip. I told Mary that I would make a short list of people to invite. I didn't want to send out a bunch of invitations. Mary said she would do the same. Mary said she invited several teachers she was friends with as well as two aunts and their maternal families. On her father's side, she invited his brother and their family. I invited my office staff, my two brothers, my sister, and their families. When I invited mom and dad, they said that they were getting together and were very happy for us. I was so afraid that something would go wrong, but Mary kept my focus on our love for each other. I asked my father to be my best man, and he said he would be happy to do so. Mary asked her mother to be her matron of honor since she was also her best friend. I asked my brother Alan if his daughter could be our flower girl, and he said he would ask his ex-wife about it. He then surprised me and said he would bring Beth as his plus one. I invited my brother Charlie, and he was happy for me. He asked if he could invite Dana, his ex-wife. I told him everything was fine. This brings me to my sister Sue. I asked her if her son Benny could be my ring bearer, Philip was too young. She said she could, and that she and her husband Richard would be there. I talked to Mary and told her about my family's arrival. My divorced parents were getting together. My brother Alan brought his ex-wife Beth, and my brother Charlie brought his ex-wife Dana. And Sue was traveling with Richard, her second husband. They all came with their families. Mary looked at me and kissed me. Phil, it looks like you're getting your family back together. I'm glad they all want to be around you. Our little church was full. Seeing my whole family together made me feel really good. Watching the children walk down the aisle, one holding a ring and the other throwing flower petals, made my heart fill with joy. I had tears in my eyes as I watched my father and mother Mary serve as best man and matron of honor. The music changed and everyone stood as my beautiful Mary walked down the aisle with her father holding her hand. I couldn't help it, tears were streaming down my face. I immediately knew that I had made the right decision. After we said yes, everyone headed to the hall we had rented. They gave us a nice buffet and Mary and I were first in line. We received our food and sat down at the main table. Before we had even taken two bites, everyone started clinking their glasses wanting us to kiss. I didn't mind the kisses, but I wanted to eat the food while it was hot. After we ate, the band started playing all the songs you hear at weddings. I don't know if I ever got that chicken song right. I did well with Hokey Pokey. Mary and I were out during the bunny hop, but were up again for the Imca. We enjoyed dancing to the slow songs, but everyone wanted to keep dancing. Mary asked me to play the piano. She told her friends that I was really good. I couldn't resist, so I went to the piano and played a couple of our favorite songs. 
Then I asked my sister Sue to come over and sing the song while I played. She had a beautiful voice. She came over and I told her I was going to play an old Elvis tune called Loving You. I started playing while Sue sang. I'll spend my whole life through. Loving you. Just love you. Winter, summer, spring too. Loving you. Loving you. It doesn't matter where I go. Or what am I doing? You know that I will always be. I love you, only you and... Damn, my sister could sing. It was amazing how quiet it became while I played and she sang. Many couples continued to dance. Several people could be heard singing along with her. I looked at the group and asked them to join. When they started, I stood up and led Mary to the dance floor. My sister continued to sing. If I'm seen with someone new, don't be blue. Won't you be blue? I'll be true, I'll be true. Always faithful, faithful to you. After my sister finished her song, she grabbed her husband and started dancing with him. The band played the song a second time. At the end of the reception, we thanked everyone for coming. Little Philip was going home with his grandparents. Mary and I were going to a motel, but we didn't tell anyone where. The next day we left for Branson for a couple of days. For Thanksgiving we went to my mom's house. She also invited the Moors. I was not surprised to see that mom invited dad too. We went to the Moors for dinner on Christmas Day. On New Year's Eve, my brother Alan invited us to his party. My two brothers were there with their exes and my sister was there with her husband. Mom and dad even showed up together. No one has remarried yet, but it was great to see them all together. Mary told everyone at the party that we would be having our second child in about seven months, the day before she went to the doctor. Everything was going great and Mary and I always talked and discussed our differences. We never had many. My brothers told me that communication solves most problems. I couldn't agree more. And thanks to Mary and Philip, I had no more problems. I loved my marriage. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one.